being done by the logistics pilot and by the local tanks on those ships, but it just wasn't enough. There was a fair amount of damage, and the newts eventually start turning off hardeners, and that's, you know, when you start dying, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Afterlife team is definitely a team that wants to uh, fight the long game. It's there for these games that are stretching deep into the match uh, when the newts start really wearing down teams. Uh, and uh, CVA needed to be able to use its explosive damage, and it just wasn't able to do that because you couldn't just easily kind of charge at the double get -ins. You know, I wonder if that was maybe a mistake where something went wrong for CVA as you saw them backing off early. And like you said, they got pinned against the, the boundary and they really had nowhere to go after that. But once they did get in close, once they were starting to brawl, they were doing a fair amount of yeah. damage. And by the time that happened, they'd already lost a bunch of ships. So, you know, that's kind of the decision an FC has to make when you land on the field to say, hey, you know, if we back off, are we going to get trapped here? And uh, as, as awful as it sounds to charge straight into this ball of no cap, is that what we have to do to win this match? Yep. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know what would have worked quite well against uh, the uh, double uh, get in the start team? team? Uh, damnations and sacrileges. Yeah, that's true. Ah, oh, rub yeah. it in their faces. Why won't <laughs> right? you? They just and made like, me bait CBA into mm -hmm. flying something different. And, one of the things yeah. I really liked about that is that we saw the big archetype. We had the triple one with Mega Dance with the Mimitar command ships and the Gilas. Like, this team has been wrecking the entire tournament. And we saw a team come up that we, we've seen kind of bits and pieces we saw we, we've, before even. We've seen Rote bring the double get in. They're kind of known yep. for that. We've seen Astartes in a few teams. Mm -hmm. But it, it wasn't a team that go, oh, this is another one of X team. This was kind of a team yep. on its own that dealt with this well-done archetype very, very well. Yep. Uh, in a lot of ways, it had some similarities with stuff that Rote brought, stuff that Pastas brought. But mm. it was, yeah, it was something unique. And uh, it was crafted well. And they'd executed on that game plan. Yep. Yep, and with that, uh, we say goodbye to CVA, who have done a, a fantastic job of impressing us so far. We can't wait to see what they bring next year. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Keep making us happy with your setups, guys. Mm -hmm. This has been amazing. Uh, and now we have another really, really anticipated match. Yes, <laughs> Outbreak versus Ministry of Inappropriate Footwork. Uh, Outbreak have banned the Proteus and the Golem. Ooh, uh, the Jolem. <laughs> The Golem. That's cool. That uh, is. And the <laughs> Ministry of Inappropriate, um, Inappropriate Footwork have banned the Gila and the Armageddon. So, um, the Proteus ban is interesting. I mean, banning out the armor tinker that uh, Ministry of Inappropriate Footwork has mm -hmm. shown that they're able to bring. Uh, but you can bring the Legion. The, the Legion actually replaces the Proteus even more effectively than the Loki replaces the um, Tengu. Tengu. Yep. Uh, so, you're not going to completely stop it with just the, the Proteus ban. Although what you could do is bring us a lot of explosive damage and really go for that. Uh, well, no, actually not explosive damage. No, or a lot of thermal damage. Yep. Yeah, sorry. If you believe you're going to force them yep. into it, you could bring that Amar Jammer just, just on something maybe like a... Yep, that like is very or something. You go, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to force you into this, therefore we can counter it. If they know the Ministry just loves that Tinker so much. I mean, as Elise said, I, I think it was yesterday, yep. Ministry are the second best team in the tourney. So if they're second best to the team that uh, invented... Tinkers. Tinker. Yeah. Uh, think, to add Tinkers. Yeah. If they're the second best and to PL who created them at Tinkers, then they, you know, they've yeah. got to be really, really confident. Yeah, I'm sure Ministry of Inappropriate Footwork might uh, might think that, that, that they maybe are even better, uh, argue with that second place, and of course Agony would argue with the whole invented thing since they actually invented it. Well, you've got uh, <laughs> you to think, with, with that much respect, you know, given to their tinker, they're going to know kind of a key module that was forgotten by another tinker at some point in this tournament, and that would be ECCM. And it's really easy, thankfully, to have ECCM on armor tinkers. Uh, yeah. You do have those mid slots. That's one of the big advantages those teams have. We've, on the armor tinkers, or Meepos, whatever you want to call them, um, you can usually take advantage of uh, ECCM uh, sensor boosters and road sensor boosters really, really well, yeah. and also do like some crazy things like just throw unbonus damps across your whole team. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen... Uh, unbonus these, ECCM? Before. Yep, I've yep. seen these teams do really effective uh, use of unbonus ECCM. Yep. Interesting. I don't know quite what to say to that. Mm -hmm. so I'm still caught up with that that you called them Meepos, but... Uh. Yeah, I mean, again, <laughs> I haven't heard is, that yet. this is uh, more of the uh, tendency of uh, one of the members of PL to just try to name everything after uh, characters from uh, another game. <laughs> and uh, so uh, that's another one of those names that didn't catch on nearly as well. Some no. names, you know, you send out there and they pick up right away, like Tinkers, uh, and uh, some don't catch on quite as well. But uh, yeah, Outbreak, Ministry of Probably Footwork, uh, these are two teams. Honestly, I think, like, Outbreak, has been a, a solid team for quite a long time, yeah. but they, in a lot of ways, are a little bit past their prime uh, for tournament uh, play. Uh, Ministry of Appropriate Footwork, I think, is a team on the rise. This yeah. is a team yeah. that uh, came onto the scene quite explosively last year uh, and uh, did quite well there, and we're seeing them repeat that again this year. So the match is ready. Uh, mm -hmm. What are your predictions? 
I'm going to go with Ministry. Um, again, they beat Waffles, so they must be one of the best teams in the tournament. And uh, I, 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 as you said, they did so well last year, they've done so well this year. I, I really think that this is not the end of the story for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think Ministry of Inappropriate Footwork is going to take this. Well, just to make sure they don't win, I also mm -hmm. think Ministry of Inappropriate Footwork are going to win. I'm on outbreak on this one. Yes! Footwork has a chance. Let's go back into the commentary booth of love. So, do we have any setups that aren't a tinker? Oh no, I bombed. You bombed us. So bad. I'm sorry, guys. Hey guys, welcome back to the commentary booth. I'm CCB Rise here with Mr. Squeebles, and I want to start this match by saying CCB Fozzy is insanely smart and it's creepy. Mm -hmm. uh, Ministry of Inappropriate Footwork bringing a Legion based uh, armor tinker as predicted, and uh, I was worried he was going to actually just play the match out in his head and tell us who would win ahead of time. I think he did. Uh, it's possible. Yeah. Uh, what's Outbreak got? Uh, you know, just some rattlesnakes, vulture, scimitar, kitsune, a couple worms, maybe a couple mollusks, griffin, talwar, merlin. And uh, on the other side, with that Legion and the Thinker, three Eoses, an Ishtar, a Rapier, and uh, two Molluses. So we'll have to see if he, they're able to keep the Rapier and Molluses alive um, once this match gets going, which should be in just a second. And one, one other thing I, I should say before we get started, I remembered. Yes. The, the Rattlesnakes have come to zero on the beacon, uh, along with the entire M uh, Ministry of Inappropriate Footwork team. So there will be no delay between uh, the start of the match and damage uh, getting applied. And they also didn't appear to have launchers. That's true. So we were hoping for uh, Rage Torp uh, Rattlesnakes, almost said Scorpions. Not going to get that. Uh, some ECM coming out now onto the Legion from the Kitsun and the Griffin, which is going to be huge. And Ugh. if that doesn't do the job, then uh, probably those damps will. Important to note that the last, uh, there was one other team that fielded an armored tanker featuring a rapier, and they just got absolutely stomped. I think it's going to be a repeat here. Um, They're going for the rapier first. Which I guess makes sense, that Rapier uh, can put out a lot of threat onto the frigates. Uh, meanwhile, what's in the high slits for these rattlesnakes? That's really well, all I want to know. I probably would have no idea whatsoever, except I heard Fozzie say something in the other room, which was that Smart Bombs might be a good smart choice bombs. here. <laughs> ah, uh, uh, well, which actually didn't see any of yet, so they might just be holding back until damage actually gets centered on the rattlesnakes. Outbreak just lost a Griffin, but the Rapier did break, as you can see. Um, and there is missiles on at least one of the rattlesnakes. Yeah, there is. So, so maybe just one Smart Bomber there. Uh, to clear off drones if that becomes an issue for the rattlesnakes, the or if they can help break up the tinker in But if you with warp them. to zero with rattlesnakes mm -hmm. and start smart bombing, yeah. again, I don't do a whole lot of theory crafting, but there, there seems to be a slight problem with that plan. What's that? You also have drones? Yeah, I mean, if they're fighting somewhere else, but like the, the rattlesnakes are running geckos, which have a ton a of HP. Of True. And so, you know, if they can take out medium armor maintenance bots, or if they can take out. Um, like hammerheads or something that are on them. It depends a lot on what they come up against, I guess, but um, definitely a, a good option to have. I, I still don't know if they actually have the smart bombs. They haven't turned them on yet. I but haven't seen them, yeah. It doesn't really look like they need them. Um, even though a jam hasn't landed on this legion, uh, Mollus just went down. It looks like they're going to be able to break an Ishtar just pure, purely with the DPS their team has. Yeah, and that's no real surprise. I mean, those two rattlesnakes are cranking out really, really crazy damage. Um, really, really nice support wing, I think, from Outbreak. Uh, it is a little unusual of the teams that we've seen field rattlesnakes with a healthy support wing, which has been many over the course of the tournament so far. Uh, we haven't seen many teams put that much distance between their support wing and the rattlesnakes at the very start of the match. Right. So I think it was a little bit risky in that respect. Uh, if you would have seen something a little more traditional out of footwork, you maybe would have had to have worried about some assault frigates and some uh, worms coming around the back and, and really causing some problems. So. I think they got a little bit lucky in that respect. They clearly know what they're doing, though. They're executing kind of patiently, taking out the molluscs, buying themselves a little more wiggle room. Um, they did lose that Griffin, 
Again, let's hope that wasn't the linchpin. Uh, it doesn't look like it is. Well, it's funny, even though like that's kind of a joke that it would be the linchpin, I feel like the ECM is actually playing a really important role in this mm. match. We saw they tried to break the Ishtar, he went really low, and then actually didn't break, repped back all his armor, but now a jam has landed. The Katuna right. got a jam on the Legion, and so the reps are off, and they can chew through this Eos without any... Oh, oh uh, got a goes. lock back. So even with scan res damps, he's still able to lock back up and start reps again on the EOS. Yeah, that was uh, that was definitely good. And now the uh, EOS is uh, mid mid armor, but pulling back actually, which is really nice. Sorry um, if you guys can hear any background noise. By the way, there's literally a construction project going is. on in the studio. I so. don't know who the foreman is. Uh, <laughs> I intend to. Find, it's probably Fozzie. I mean, yeah, ah, it doesn't probably look building like it. an EOS or something. Ooh. Uh, but this EOS is stabilizing, and there's not a whole lot else to talk about. I, I feel like there, this this actually is so. The, the two big things happening right now in this match are clearly Ministry of Inappropriate Footwork is struggling to do any damage. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anything they can do to change that, but they're having a hard time. I don't even know what they're shooting at, but they're they're really not getting any significant damage anywhere. The other big thing is just when another jam lands, uh, will outbreak break one of the tanks on the Ministry of Inappropriate Yeah, Footwork it's team. actually really really impressive that this EOS is tanking. I mean, a Legion's reps are, are pretty substantial, no doubt about that, and EOS has a great resist profile, which is why it does fit well into this tinker. Um, wow. By the way, sorry to interrupt. Did you, I don't know if you were done. No. I, I noticed something. It's interesting. That just speaking to the kind of importance of the Kitsune, mm -hmm. uh, that's actually where all the damage is headed from Ministry of Inappropriate Folk. I guess really? now maybe okay. some, some, some headed onto the Rattlesnake, but there's definitely a squad of drones chasing around that Kitsune, ah. trying, to, uh, trying to kill that so that they're not uh, exposed. Rule number one, though. Yeah, yeah. I, exactly. I, I, don't, I, I think it's a good choice. The Legion pilot is probably yelling at them that that needs to be done. Uh, but it's still, if you're not applying to it, right, you can't wait for that one risky hit, right, because he's just going to catch reps from the Scimitar, yeah. which is still up. I do think it's interesting the amount of E-War that is being spread out. I mean, you've got Damps and TDs coming off of these EOs and this Ishtar, which, of course, they are an armored team, so it does make sense that they would fit some E-War in the mids. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're still putting out tracking disruptors on the Vulture. They're still putting Damps on the Scimitar. So uh, they Scimitar is actually some taking pressure. some uh, damage now as well. That's what I was going to ask, because the EOS does have a bonus to the speed of its heavy drones. They can absolutely keep up with the Scimitar. They can almost keep up with the Frigate, although not that Griffin or that Kitsune, unfortunately, for them. So the Scimitar is half shields. He's going 3,100, though, which is going to be tough. I mean, really nice tanking work done by Footwork, but... Not a whole lot of progress made, and to be fair, uh, there's not a whole lot of good options for them with their limited mobility. No. So they've tried some different things, tried the Katune, tried the Rattlesnake for a bit. I, it seems like they are making some progress on the Scimitar, but oh, for I now, smart not bombs. breaking it. Yeah, it's yeah. A, there's actually smart bombs on the EOS. EOS, yeah. Um, another thing I'm going to mention because Apothne made a big sign and everything to tell me about it. Uh, I'm waiting. I was kind of waiting to see if we'd get a view of it, but um, Outbreak definitely uh, making some attempts at bumping this Tinker apart. Right. Of course, uh, range is a big limitation. Um, for Tinker teams, the Legion only have like 6k rep range or something like that, so if they can manage to charge into one of those ships, send it careening away from the Legion, they, that might give them the chance to break one of the tanks. Yeah, it doesn't look like they've had a whole lot of success with it, though. No. I mean, I ideally, they would have maybe a cruiser or two that could really pick up some right. speed and hit into an EOS. They don't have that. Their options are to remove the rattlesnakes, which they've made quite clear they're not going to, uh, or to try and have that vulture, even the scimitar, come in and bump, which I don't think they want to do. So, no. Uh, not a whole lot of bumping options. I mean, they definitely, everybody's had time to think about this. It's so interesting when matches go along like this, the strategy shifts for both teams. They've tried to break the scimitar. Now mm -hmm. they're going back to the rattlesnake with damps on the scimitar. On the other side, the Kitsune stopped trying to jam the Legion, since that seems really difficult for him, and started trying to right. jam other ships to break the cap chain. Right, and um, they, they're making headway on wow, uh, the Rattlesnake. Wow, the Rattlesnake going, going Rattlesnake. really low. But uh, I don't think it's going to end up being okay, because this Scimitar isn't even in range. That Rattlesnake has a pretty healthy local tank, as you can see there. I mean, it almost looked like he boosted twice, and it, well, there's reps. And anyways, there's the reps. The yeah. Scimitar did just head back in and so give him reps, but that pulls the Scimitar close. They can switch DPS over again and try to break the Scimitar. They can, but do they have the tackle to keep him there? And I, I would venture to guess no, no especially no, no, if no. they have damps. The only the only tackle they have for the Scimitar really is those damps. So I expect what you're going to see is, oh, there's a worm taking damage. That's interesting. Oh, there's a worm taking a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. The Simi might have just gotten baited into getting out of rep range of the worm, but he's repping the kit soon, just in case. <laughs> It's this definitely much more go. important for him to keep the Kitsune alive than to keep the Worm alive. I, yeah, I agree, but the Kitsune also hasn't won them the match by now. So, no, that's true. Uh, he's repping him. I was cheering for you, Footwork. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it, it is kind of interesting because typically you see Damps used 
uh, as there to keep the reps from applying. But then the secondary effect is that it draws the logi into a range where you can capitalize on it. They can't. Um, they just sort of say, oh, you got to burn in, and you're tense for a few moments, then you get there, and uh, they can't hold you there. So even if the EOS were to switch back on to them, the scimitar would kite right back out, and it would be a repeat. So I think something, I was just going to yeah. say something else interesting about this. This is kind of showing why um, the, I think the test type of tinker is so interesting. Uh, we've seen here at Ministry of Inappropriate Footwork, by bringing a couple extra vulnerable support ships, they've actually kind of in a way uh, given a really easy opportunity for Outbreak to win, even though they can't break the core of the tinker. Right. But they don't have enough damage to actually do something back. Right. They're, so they're kind of gotten in a tough spot because of that. Comparing this to the test tinker, though, they still do bring what are by tinker standards vulnerable ships with the T1 resist profile, but the difference is they don't bring frigates Right. quite like this. Right. Um, so yeah, it is interesting. Like test, the more that we talk about it, the more I realize they've struck a really, really cool balance between mm -hmm. buffing the damage to your tinker while not limiting the survivability. And that EOS did get low, reps are on it. It tanked before, I imagine it has to tank again, but this tower, it's so close for ministry. They almost <laughs> yeah. keep like headshotting somebody. Yeah, I know Hydra like would be upset about me saying that, but exactly. It seems like they're they're really close to being able to make a dent in the outbreak yeah. setup, but they can't quite do it. Partly thanks to really good scimitar piloting. I yeah, think. no, the, the simi is doing well. Uh, even though these are unbonus stamps, and there's probably not a substantial amount of them. I mean, maybe three, maybe four. Um, it's still pressure, right? Yep. And he doesn't want to expose himself unnecessarily. So. Uh, while it's not the highest pressure situation a Logi pilot's been in, it's one he could easily mess something up and cost him important ships. Absolutely. So it looks like everything might survive here. Um, yeah, which is, it's, it, it is looking possible. Yeah, this is the definition, I think, uh, of why tinkers are a risk. Like mm -hmm. if, you, if you can't punch through the tank of the other team, if they bring something with good sustain, good resist profiles, then you're going to sit there the entire time really content with yourself for tanking, but not winning I mean, the match. Yeah, but to be fair, they, they did seem really close. I think that that's they kind did. of yeah. the cool thing about this format is this kind of setup is really close to having the right amount of damage, and it really depends on how well the other team flies and exactly what kind of composition they bring. With 15 seconds left, I will say, I think the rapier is the biggest issue with this setup. Yeah, it does they've, seem weak. They've tied 14 points up in that where they could have gone with a more, I hate to say this, test philosophy on it, <laughs> and I think it really could have helped them. But it was well fought on both sides. I yep. just think uh, it was it was won by the comp of Outbreak being being well executed. Yeah, being well executed by some good scimitar piloting and uh, a good plan for sure from them. So congratulations, Outbreak. Um, and that'll do it for this match. We'll send it back to uh, the studio. Day four, uh, that means that pretty much only the good teams and test alliance are left. Uh, test alliance, please ignore. Worst of the best. Delicious spaghetti you eat while waiting for an prey to put its shiny port into his career. So I know he's with Jim, Jim, and let the body hit the floor and that is how the boom come from. the desk where we are uh, joined by two new uh, joinees. Wow, <laughs> English is hard. Clutch. So I'm CCP Gargant here with uh, Sir Squeeple, CCP Fossey and uh, Elise Randolph. You just saw an interesting match that mm -hmm. had uh, Fossey almost jumping up and down with information that he couldn't share because, uh, because of the construction work going on. Well, there was a lot of, I actually really want to see the replay of this match. Uh, there was definitely some attempts at bumping and I'm not sure how successful they were. I've been seeing through that fight, um, the Legion, I, part of the reason the Rapier died is the Legion did get far away from him. Um, but, and so I, I thought maybe a bump caused that. Uh, and so we have to look more closely. And then I've definitely seen outbreak people careening through the middle of the uh, footwork team, trying to get bumps. Uh, but then I've also I also saw that Legion just like motoring away from his team sometimes when no one else is around. Maybe he was just trying to like avoid the bumps by. Yeah. 
elite uh, maneuvers. I think it might have just been a case of they like had everyone anchor on the Legion and had the, like, the Legion, let's move the whole team around, but then the Legion was faster than everybody else. <laughs> Ooh, that's uh, possible. Because, yeah, there, it, was, it was getting some range on his team sometimes. I think the, the ships flying through the middle of the Tinker were actually frigates, though. Based yes, they the did speed. it with the Worms a lot. They right, did it with okay. the uh, Vulture sense. at least once or twice, though, too, oh. which might have been more successful. Uh, the Rattlesnakes didn't look like they were picked up enough speed to be significant. Right, they were pretty, yeah. pretty slow moving, so... So uh, is that a matter of Outbreak just saying, I know you're going to bring a Tinker team, I'm just going to bring something that I'm pretty sure can beat it and just come at me sort of thing? Or? It, it'd be risky because it, it wouldn't have beat a lot of different teams. Yeah. I mean, if that, if that had been a Tinker that just had uh, compressed its points into some more durable ships, yeah. then uh, they wouldn't have beat it if it had been uh, basically like the Marauder plus smaller number of uh, mm -hmm. ships. Or if it had been a, a shield variant instead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the fact that the Rapier and the Molluses were able to be knocked down for points is the only reason they were able to actually take that. Mm -hmm. So if they were confident that would be the Tinker, then that, that confidence should be a little bit shaken. Because that, <laughs> it had a yeah. couple of issues breaking that Tinker. Yeah. But I suppose that we could say that Outbreak surprised us. Or mm -hmm. you guys, I had them marked. I know, I'm continuing. This is like, what is it now? Five wrong, one right in the second half? I'm, yeah. I'm predicting exactly what people are bringing, but then they're failing with them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not, you're not calculating the errors of humans into yeah. this. Wow, so bad. I'm uh, very happy to say that this was the fourth right one since the break, and uh, overall I'm doing pretty good. Very nice. I'm just counting on Camel TNT to like, bring me back into the, uh, <laughs> the good place. This is why I, I will repeat what I've been saying the entire weekend, and uh, my, the previous people that talk about commentator curses, they were just bad at, at predicting. Mm -hmm. I'm just not incompetent. I yeah, predict that. Apparently, yeah. apparently I am, based on how many yeah. I've gotten right today. But the important part is I've had fun not being right. I think you should uh, tweet out a picture of your sheet. Once you you have the best sheet. This is the best well, sheet. Well, you yeah. know, that's... Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Did you have, like, a highlighter? Well, yeah. Where did you find yeah. the highlighter? That's awesome. Well, yeah. secret sources. I've mm -hmm. uh, done a lot of exploring of the CCP offices. You guys have mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. We do. Like electricity, televisions. Heat. It's not mm -hmm. at all like I expected Iceland to be. Roofs. Yep. Yeah. To, to protect yeah. us from the rain. The monkey mm -hmm. experiments in the basement. Apparently spiders, I found <laughs> out. Yep. There are. Some, uh, pretty big ones. Mm -hmm. There was one. <laughs> there was. He was, was. Quite <laughs> <famous>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but so this was uh, the second to last match of the elimination bracket before, mm -hmm. uh, of, of the weekend, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, with Ministry of Inappropriate Footwork going home after a rather Excellent display in the tournament, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yes. They did a great job this year, just as they did last year, and uh, I'm really looking forward to what they bring next year. Next yeah. year, they need to be paired up against PL, and each each of them brings a, a, a tinker setup and mm -hmm. ministry yeah, wins. Just have a good like super time. Tinker versus tinker. <laughs> yeah. The um, that'll be Bach's favorite. <laughs> yeah. Uh, these last couple matches, like this last match, the next match, are uh, elimination bracket matches. Yes. But if you had just told people uh, that this match was going to happen with the two teams before this tournament started, they'd probably think, oh, yeah, it's going to be a winner's bracket match. Yeah. Like these are really, really good teams that yep. have done really well. Uh, and the next one is like another great example of it. We've got Try, again, members of the old Verge of Collapse team, a lot of tournament experience and been doing really well. Uh, and Gorgon Empire, yep. uh, who ha has some members who are part of the old Dark Side teams and been doing really well in this tournament as well. So these are uh, two really good teams I'm really looking forward to see what they bring. The bans for that match uh, are already in and Triumph have banned the Gila and the Armageddon mm -hmm. while the Gorgon Empire banned the Tango and the Loki. Okay, so it's Gorgon don't want a shield tinker. Yes. So Which is interesting because Tri for the whole tournament has been running shield comps, predominantly mm -hmm. shield, or er, uh, drone comps, sorry, predominantly shield drone comps. Um, they run Rattlesnakes, they run Gila's with the Slepnir support, yep. so they've run like the greatest hits of drone comps, and I wonder why they banned the Gila for so themselves. Rattlesnake core is open, which is especially notable because Tri already showed us that they ha are willing to use their flagship Rattlesnake earlier today. And mm. they can field it without the Gila's. Yeah. So. Right. And uh, the, the team they brought with it was a single Rattlesnake team that did a great job last match. I'm sure they've got two Rattlesnake versions of that uh, setup as well. Uh, so that's got to be something that Gorgon has, is going to be concerned about, because that, that flagship destroyed their opponents. And try again, doing what they did earlier in this tournament when they had to play earlier, they are eliminating like, many types of uh, archetypes by taking out the Geddon and the Gila. It's not like they're just taking out the Tinkers with the Tengu Loki. They're taking out many things that uh, Gorgon might be able to field. Mm -hmm. Right, and Gorgon has in fact fielded Geddon's in two of the three matches, so yeah. I, I think that was definitely a smart ban. Yeah. 
it's mm. also uh, interesting, uh, well, uh, a good factor to consider that uh, Tri did fight today, but Gorgon were fighting yesterday. Mm -hmm. And Tri and Merit are coming from a win. So uh, yes. they might be in on, a, on an unstop unstoppable streak. Again, English is defeating mm. me. It's exactly but like that ad. They're just like no scoping everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I thought you meant the spaghetti one. I no, still haven't no. figured out the... Uh, no, that was the Gorgon one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it kind of makes me afraid yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I don't know why. It was, it's, it's a, I think it's an instructional video on how to draw their logo. It seems far more sinister than that. It, I feel like subliminally there's hidden frames. It reminds me of the guy with the bee hat doing the worms with holes bzz, bzz, bzz thing. Yeah. Like they're, yeah. they're on the same kind of level, right? It like yeah. unsettles you at a deep like animal yeah. level. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like there's a part of my brain that hasn't been activated for like 500,000 <laughs> years. It's like there is something wrong. It's just like run, run, Fozzy. Yeah, that's kind of what I get. The log, the log shows that that area of Fuzzy's brain was last accessed 5,000 <laughs> years ago. It's good that your log is so uh, encompassing. Mm -hmm. We are uh, experiencing a slight delay for about the next match because um, we're told that... Uh, some ISP issues, I guess. Some ISP issues. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think they're going to be getting back on track pretty soon. Yes. Like it's like expected ISP downtime or something. Fairly so. soon, yeah. yeah. So uh, I just want to start or well, take the time to talk about the uh, the activation offers that we have. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in going back to EVE or trying EVE, if, if you like what you've seen, uh, you can try out the 14-day trial, which is found here below the stream. Uh, it's an open trial. We also have the power of two uh, promotion <laughs> active, where you can mm -hmm. activate another account because you might function better in uh, in some sort of some sort of power of two <laughs> mentality. <laughs> This is extreme. This yeah. is extreme. Extreme mm. close-up. Uh, we have a reactivation offer going uh, in account management for, for accounts that lapsed before the 1st of July. Mm -hmm. So if that itch is getting to you, go for it. Mm -hmm. Other wow. than that, uh, we have a bunch of other things happening. We have um, mm -hmm. uh, what Back in Alien was talking about earlier, about yeah. sacrificing his nicks. Uh, I, I've heard rumors that uh, Mr. Sweebles here, you might be joining in in some fashion. Let's but I will. I would be happy to. Unfortunately, <laughs> nicks is not quite my speed. Mm -hmm. And then it just seems like I'm trying to be like Back in Alien. So uh, I'm trying to get somebody to broker a deal so that I can fly a hell and actually okay. yeah. look good doing it. I care about the mm -hmm. kids, but if I can't look good while doing it, it's just not worth it. It slows me yeah, down a little yeah. bit, you know what I mean? But either way, I'll be there and I will lose a lot of ISK, uh, mm -hmm. hopefully. Yes, and most assuredly. So another thing that we should maybe mention is uh, uh, on Friday we have received reports that a certain member of the community wants to give back some of the uh, bounties that has had been placed on him. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a, a member of Eve Bat who's gotten a lot of bounties on his head. He wants to undock in something really, really big and expensive to give back to the community. I've heard it may be big and expensive and sort of like bulbous and long. Bulbous <laughs> and long is exactly the mm -hmm. word. I think uh, I think uh, Lise Randolph has had some experiences with these blowing up. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, I'm not sure. I, I think Grath has something uh, to do with the, uh, the last one that was blown up. So mm -hmm. it should be exciting. I don't know if we can get a, a SoundCloud clip of him during the Friday event, but... That would be great. That, that would, would be, be great. Good, yeah. Maybe a little snippet. Yeah. It'll probably be safe for the kids. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. It, this <laughs> this uh, speed, time, yeah. it will be in an incursion system. So yes. um, mm. uh, Black Legion will have to take gates to get there, but that's fine. They can do that. Uh, and uh, then they can get on a whole other Revenant kill. So yeah, it's going to be a, a very, very fancy kill. All, in, all mm -hmm. in a way to give back the bounties that have been placed on him because he's just a nice guy. Mm -hmm. Other things that might be coming up? Uh, well...